One of the best features of web browsers and web technologies, HTML, CSS, and even JavaScript, is backward compatibility. If we look at the last 10 years of how CSS was developing, we've come a long way and we had some major breakthroughs in the way we're writing our style sheets. Specifically, I'm talking about media queries, even about CSS Grid. And 20 years ago, we didn't have that, but the websites that we have created then will still work perfectly in today's browsers. They will not be ideal, especially not on mobile devices on smaller screen sizes, but they will work reasonably well. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it can be to rewrite something that was created 20 years ago in modern CSS. Specifically, I'm talking about the Daring Fireball website. It's one of my favorite blogs, I love reading it, but the problem is it's not mobile responsive. On mobile devices specifically, it's pretty difficult to pinpoint exactly where the content is because you have to pinch the zoom exactly to the main area of the website because it's not mobile responsive and then you still when scrolling end up going a little bit left and a little bit right and that is really painful experience i'm sure you've seen it if you're trying to read during fireball or any website that is not mobile responsive on your mobile device luckily this can be very easily adjusted using media queries as we can change the source of daring fireball or any website for that matter we can tweak it using the modern browsers. I've been using Arc as my day-to-day -day browser for a while now. I really love it. And one of my favorite features is the ability to create website boosts. And boosts are ability to change the styling of the website in the browser itself. Basically, you can add your own CSS or JavaScript to any website that you want and overwrite the website's default existing styles. And that is exactly what we'll do with Daring Fireball. We will tweak it and make it a little bit more modern and mobile responsive. Let's dive in. All right, I have Daring Fireball website open in my Arc browser and you can immediately see that text on this page is really small and what I usually do, what I usually do in other browsers is I just hit Command Plus to zoom in a little bit and make it a little bit easier to read. But that is not ideal. As already mentioned, we will make this site responsive. To do that, we'll use feature of Arc Browser called Boosts. You can find Boosts in the website address bar under this icon. If you go to More and then select either Manage Boost or you can just create a new boost. Once you click this, the toolbar will appear and it will give you an ability to play around with various options of this website. You can change the colors of the website if you play around with this slider here. You can tweak it however you like and you can change it to something that really makes sense for you, that works better for your preferences. And you can also very easily change the font to something that is a little bit more readable, which can be an issue on a lot of websites. And of course, you can also change the text size here directly by clicking this very button. It is the simple way to tweak any website that you want, but that is not what I wanted to show you in this video. Here, I want to show you how to make this website mobile responsive. And for that, we will need to play around with CSS. Before we go into that, I will reset all those edits that I made here. If I click this icon right here, it will reset my colors to the original colors. And if I want to reset all other edits I made, which is changing the font size and changing the font family, I can go into my settings here and choose reset all edits. There we go. Now the site is at the beginning exactly as it is by default. So if I want to tweak the CSS of this website, I can go into code options here and you'll see that there's a CSS tab here and JavaScript tab. If you want to play around with JavaScript, you can do that as well. We'll focus on CSS in this video. Before we start playing around with the code, I will hide my sidebar because I think it's getting in the way and it's no really use showing it here. So I will just hit command S shortcut to hide and show the sidebar in our browser. If I ever want to see it, I can just hit Command S again, or if I want to hide it, I can hit Command S and it will be hidden. I can open developer tools by using the standard browser shortcuts to open developer tools, Command Option I in my case, or I can just hit this icon right here, which is a handy shortcut in Arc. First thing that we will do is we will tweak the font size and we will make the text a little bit bigger. And there in Firewall, the font size is defined on the body tag and I can find it right here in my styles panel. The body tag is selected, so I'll just filter here for font size. And as you see, it's defined as 12 pixels. And if you go into other parts of the website, you're going to see that all other font sizes are defined in M units. This means that if I tweak the font size on the body tag, all other font sizes will be tweaked as well because they are defined relatively to the body tag. 
rather relatively to the parent element, which goes all the way to the body in this particular website. So I will select my body tag again, and I will add another rule here, font size, let's set it to 20 pixels. As you can see, this is working, but we have font size in my developer tools. And if I reload the page, it will be gone. I actually want to move this into my booth. To do that, I will focus on developer tools again, and I will open my command palette and search for changes drawer. Show changes. And right here, I can copy all changes I made. I'll do it right now. And I will paste this directly into my booth. My edits in developer tools are still applied, but I can easily revert those if I hit this undo button right here. Once I do, all changes I made in developer tools will be gone and my boost can take over. But as you can see, this is not working. The font is still small. This font size 20 is not applied. Here is the deal. Arc injects the styles from the boost directly into the user engine style sheet, which means that it will be overridden by the styles created by the user. And that is not really ideal. Ideally, I would want this styles to overwrite styles in the user's style sheet. But to work around that, of course, we can increase the specificity of this selector, or simply we can just slap important right here on the font size, and this will take precedence over the styles defined in their fireball style sheets. So let's try it out. And immediately as I write this, you can see that font size has been increased and my boost is working. So generally speaking, when you're working with boosts, if you're tweaking existing selectors, you will want to slap important to the styles you apply because that's the easiest way to actually overwrite the code from various websites, including Daring Fireball in this particular example. Next, let's examine how is this layout for Daring Fireball created. We have this header here, sidebar and main content, and this is essentially all there is to layout of this particular website. I'll focus on developer tools again. And right here on the body tag, I can see that there's a minimal width set to 760 pixels, which means that if we jump into responsive mode, and if we try to reduce the size of the window, it's not going to allow us the minimum size is 760 pixels. And that is, of course, not what we want for the responsive version. So this is one of the properties that we will need to tweak that we will need to change. I'll jump back into developer tools and I'll disable responsive mode. And right here, I'll switch minimum width to auto. This is of course not enough to make this website mobile responsive, but whenever we notice something that could affect mobile version when we're playing around with this code, we will immediately tweak it just so we don't have problems with that particular selector, with that particular element later on down the line when we're actually trying to fix mobile side of things. And of course, as you already seen, we're going to jump into the changes drawer of developer tools and copy all the changes we make. So we don't have to think about where are we making those changes. We don't have to immediately move all the changes we make into our boost. We can play around in developer tools. And once we're done, we can just copy all changes we made. We can tweak them at important where necessary. And this will allow us to very easily create exactly the style that we want for our website. Let's check the box element here. And again, we have width set to 720 pixels. We don't want to constrict this to specific value. We'll just set it to auto here. And I will jump into my banner here. There's again width set to 300 pixels, but as this is just this header, this logo daring fireball, this might not be an issue. So I will not tweak it right now. I'll check out the cyber element here. And as you can see, it is positioned absolutely so this layout sidebar and main next to it is created using position absolute. Main content is positioned relatively. If we check it out, you're gonna see it's right here. And margin on this element is specified as 222 pixels left, which means that it gives us enough space to move absolutely sidebar exactly to this position. And if we check the sizing of the sidebar, we should see that the width is set to something like 220 pixels, 160 pixels, I'm not accounting for margin here. Of course, in 2024, we don't have to resort to position absolute to create a simple layout like this. We have CSS grid, which allows us to very easily create this particular layout for daring fireball with a few lines of CSS. So let's tweak the positioning of the sidebar. Instead of position absolute, we will have position static. Usually I could just disable this position property in developer tools and it would work as expected, but we will want to override values for our boost. So that is why I will tweak it and change it to static instead. Top property in this case will no longer mean anything because it's not applied to the static 
positioning so we don't have to worry about this and in our preview you can immediately see that our sidebar is right here while our main content is underneath it exactly as you would expect because this content the sidebar and main content is laid out in the normal document flow which means it's going to come one after another or one underneath another i'll select my main element now and i will remove this margin 222 pixels we don't really want that we don't need that so i'll set this to zero and once i do you're going to see that my main content falls exactly to the left edge of the website which is exactly what is expected for this particular code so now we are ready to set css grid for this layout as you see in html we have a box container we have a banner sidebar and main elements within that box container so what we will do is we will specify css grid on the box element we will set two columns and two rows one row is going to be for a banner a second row is going to be for sidebar and main and one column is going to be for the sidebar and the second column is going to be for the main so let's do this right now on the box element i'll set display grid and now i will need to set grid columns and grid rows and the easiest and simplest way to do that would be to use grid template areas if you don't know how grid template areas work i have a guide exactly on that check it out link is going to be on screen and in the description but in a nutshell Grid template areas allow us to define visually how our layout is going to look. So let's set grid template areas. We're going to have two rows and each row is going to be in quotes. So first row is going to be our header. So let's specify it as header. And as we will have two columns, we will specify two columns for our header as well. And for our second row, we will specify sidebar exactly as we have right on the page. The second element we have for our main content right next to the sidebar is going to be main content all right we have grid template areas defined we will just need to assign proper elements to exactly the areas we already defined so banner is going to be our header element so grid area here is going to be header sidebar is going to be in our sidebar grid area grid area sidebar and the main content of course is going to be in the grid area main All right, let's check our grid. As you can see, we have two columns and two rows exactly as we want, but the sizing of course is not appropriate right now. So we will tweak this next. I will jump back into developer tools and we will remove fixed sizing from our sidebar and main elements. On sidebar, we have width set to 160 pixels. We're gonna change this to auto. And on main, we have width set to 425 pixels and just as well we will change this to auto now this is obviously far from ideal we want to restrict the sizing of our main content to something that will be decently readable let's call it that way so for that we're going to set maximum width and for this we can use character length unit because ideal reading length for a text is somewhere between 50 to 80 characters and if we set our maximum width to something like 50 or 60 characters this means it will always be exactly comfortable for reading so we'll set this to 55 characters now this looks much better but we need a little bit of margin between our sidebar and main content or specifically we need gap between those columns we will set gap on our grid element and this is going to be box element here gap is going to be something like five ram units but as you see we don't really need row gap because there's enough spacing between our rows we actually only need spacing between our columns so instead of gap we're going to set column gap property there we go and now our content is nicely separated this looks much better but it's still not what we want we actually want to constrict the sizing of our columns and for that we will specify sizing for our grid we will specify this of course on our box element and this is going to be property grid template columns and for our first column which is going to be sidebar we will set value auto because we want this to take as much space as it needs to and for our second column we will actually use min max function or we will specify minimum and maximum size that we want for this particular column min max at minimum this column will be auto we want it to be as big as it has to be based on its content and at maximum we will set something like 800 pixels this should be enough this still doesn't look okay because we still need to align those columns this content that we have in our grid so we'll set justify content center there we go our grid is now 
really nicely centered and it looks exactly as it should. And if I disable this grid toggle, you're going to see that we basically recreated the existing layout of Daring Fireball with CSS Grid. And we just added a couple of CSS properties and it's all working really nicely as it should be. And we did this for a very simple reason. It's very easy to adjust the layout for the mobile version once you're dealing with CSS Grid. As you remember, we set grid template areas on our box element and we defined header, sidebar and main areas. So for the responsive version, all we need to do is tweak this template areas and instead of header, sidebar, main one next to another, we want to have header, sidebar and main one underneath the other. And before we do this, let's copy all changes we made in developer tools to our boost. I'm going to open changes drawer in my developer tools and I will copy all changes I made in this file. I'll paste this right in here and as you see this is pretty much messed up so we will need to adjust this code a little bit, clean it up, remove unnecessary things and add curly braces where we need to. I'll do this really quickly here. This code is now cleaned up in our boost and we will revert all changes made to the file. And the problem now is that we still need to overwrite the existing properties of their fireball and those will be this width values. We're going to add important here. We will define our responsive media query now. So I'll jump into developer tools and I will enable responsive mode. Can close the drawer. I'm actually seeing a problem with my sidebar. This is going outside of the window. We don't actually want this. So we'll need to figure out why is this overflowing. It seems that this is the problem. Margin on the sidebar paragraphs is set to minus three M units. If we change this to zero, this should remain within our sidebar. And now if I resize my window again, it is not going to go outside of the bounds until it gets way too small. We will now find exactly the size where we want to adjust our layout. And I think this should be something along the lines of 800 pixels. So before that, we need to add padding to our content. We don't want the text here to be at the edge of the browser. We will add inline padding to our content on our box element, we will set padding and line to RAM units. Now the content will not be leaning against the edge. This is fine. I'll copy the changes from the changes drawer and paste them into my boost. Padding inline will be on the box element and we will add important. And sidebar paragraphs will have margin sets to this value right here. And we will revert changes from developer tools. There we go. This appears to be working as expected. We will add a media query here straight up in our boost editor and we're going to define it as at media maximum width is going to be 800 pixels because this is the value where we want to adjust the layout. I'm going to copy grid template areas from my box selector. Again, I'm going to re-add it here and I will adjust the grid template areas to header sidebar and main, right? Let's try resizing our page here. Nothing is going to happen because we have not adjusted the grid sizing. So we set grid template columns to auto. Okay, there we go. And this is much better. So we adjusted the layout of Daring Fireball to have one column on the mobile version. And this is defined as banner or this header here and the content, the actual content we want to read. And lastly, a sidebar and sidebar is going to be this navigation menu along with the advertisement. And if we look at the sidebar here, it's not really working as it should be. We'll need to adjust this a little bit. So in developer tools, I will find my sidebar and I will tweak text align from right to center. This is looking much better already but we're still having some problems. This is not ideally centered. We have some unwanted margin here. Let's see where it's coming from in developer tools. Sidebar UL element has margin left set to minus four M units. This is probably something we want to adjust, not just for a mobile version, but for our content entirely. So I will tweak this and change it from minus four M units to zero. 
now this is looking better and lastly we want to address this at as you already probably realized i could have very easily removed or hidden this ad from this page and this is actually something i often do with my boosts i hide an ad that is interfering with content but daring fireball is not this type of page this ad is unobtrusive, it's helpful, and it doesn't get in the way of me reading the content. So I will not remove it, I will not hide it, I will just adjust it so it looks properly as it should look. I will center this misaligned text here. So paragraphs within our sidebar martini for the responsive version should have margin inline set to auto because we want this to be centered. This is exactly what I'll do right here. Sidebar martini. Mm -hmm paragraph and margin inline is going to be auto we will need important here there we go this seems to be looking okay now i will copy the changes i made in developer tools just so i don't forget about them again i'm going to open the changes drawer i'm going to copy the code i've changed and i will paste it right here this is my sidebar text align is going to be center and this is going to be only for the responsive version i'll add another selector here and we'll of course tweak the margin on sidebar ul but this will not be for the responsive version this will be for all ul elements of our sidebar and there we go i will revert my changes from here and let's see how is this looking. Our sidebar is looking decent, but it's still not perfectly centered. If we jump into UL selector here, you're going to see that we have padding left set to 1.25 M units, and we will want to remove this as well for our UL elements of sidebar. Padding left is going to be zero, important. Okay. And now this is working fine on our desktop version and it's working fine for our mobile version as well. There are a few more elements that we could adjust here, like this search bar. This could be a little bit bigger, a little bit better. We might want to adjust this, and we might want to adjust our logo for the responsive version because this looks like it's out of place. I want to remove a little bit of margin from here because I think this is a little bit too much, especially for mobile devices, and I want to align it to the start of the text right here. So for that, we're going to remove with 300 and we're going to change it to auto and we will remove margin left and we will set it to zero or rather we will set it to something like minus five pixels because we want to align the circle with the start of our text and not the start of our image because it does have a little bit of padding as you can see. So I will tweak a negative margin left here until it's properly aligned as it should be. Something like this. Perfect. Margin button is going to be zero and now this is looking much nicer and much more appropriate for the mobile version. I'll again copy the changes from my changes drawer. And I will paste them into my media query for the responsive version. Of course, we'll need to set important on both of our properties because we are changing them. There we go. We'll revert our changes from developer tools and this is still working as it should be. Lastly, let's tweak this area right here, our search and copyright notice. Footer element here has margin top set to 14 M units and this is way too much for our use case. So we'll set it to something more appropriate, something like one rem unit or maybe even to zero because we have enough spacing from the content above. This is going to be okay. We will also set text align to center here because this is what makes sense with rest of our aside content. And lastly, we will tweak display preferences and copyright text right here. And if you are familiar with Darren Fireball, you probably know that you can change display preferences here on the page and you can tweak the font size, and increase it a little bit, but the setting allows you to change font size only to 16 pixels and we are changing it to something a little bit bigger, 20 pixels, which is something that I prefer more. So that is why I'm using Arc Boost exactly for this all right let's align this text align on small print is going to be center and this should be pretty much okay right now again let's jump into our changes drawer and let's copy the changes we've made 
I will paste him to our mobile responsive version, to our media query. I will add importance to my properties here. And I will revert my changes from developer tools. There we go. And I'm missing an important here as well. All right, this is looking much nicer than before. So to recap, what we did here is we've used Arc Boost to change the layout of the Fireball website to increase the font size a little bit and to tweak the positioning for the mobile responsive version. Because on mobile, ideally, you want to have one column and you don't want to scroll horizontally to find the content and then adjust your zoom exactly to that particular text length so you can read it comfortably. This is what we're changing here. The main problem with this is that Arc at the moment still doesn't support boosts on mobile version. I truly hope that they change this soon. If anybody from Arc is listening, please give us boosts on mobile. I would really love that. I would love the ability to enable boosts from my desktop on mobile version of the browser as well, because specifically for the Fireball, it would mean a great difference for me. I hope this clearly shows you how powerful HTML and CSS are, how future-proof they are. If you write them today, they will work, well, basically forever in the browsers that will come after the browsers we have right now. And with a little bit of tweaking, with a little bit of modern CSS, you can make existing websites a lot better and a lot more comfortable for reading on mobile devices right now and in the future. Who knows, maybe for VR devices or something entirely different. Thank you so much for your attention. My name is Zoran Nyambor. I will see and hear you in a different ARC boost, or rather, in the next video. And until then, I would like to thank my amazing patrons, Davor, Zvonko, and Luca. Thank you so much for your continuous support. It really means a lot, and it really helps this channel going.